Mount Hope. Mount Hope was a canal zone town that uh, was primarily a uh, industrial area. What we're looking at here, and I'll back up a little bit, is um, the landfill or the dump in uh, Mount Hope. And the reporter here was uh, Daryl Raglan. And he stated when he was a canal zone policeman in the 70s, sediment was dumped in the back of the Mount Hope landfill. I drove back there a couple of times when I worked uh, the Rainbow City patrol car and it looked like a desert with endless white mounds. And um, again, uh, this is one of the areas that uh, dredging was uh, dumped. And there's uh, an article that uh, it was uh, written by, um, it, it was uh, Paul Robertson, and he was uh, published it originally in the Dallas Morning News. And uh, the article mentioned the two canal zone police officers who routinely patrolled this area died within six months, each from non Hodgkin's lymphoma. So this is your canal out here, and this is the area we're looking at. And this is a current view. As you can see, we still have this white stuff that uh, uh, Daryl said looked like a desert. All right, 1969, same thing. Here's where we're talking about, back in here. And on the map, it's just barely on there, but we're talking about this area in here. And again, on the dredging map, that's up here, that's number two, right up in there. Fort Gwillick. Fort Gwillick was constructed and opened in 1941. It was uh, perhaps best known as the home installation of the 8th Special Forces Group, uh, which later became known as 3rd Battalion, 7th Special Forces Group. And they were uh, located there in 1962 until the unit was inactivated. And it was, Fort Gullick was also the location of the School of the Americas. In 1984, partial control of the Fort Gullick was turned over to the Republic of Panama, and they renamed it Forte Espinar. Uh, the U.S. took administrative control in 1989 as a result of uh, the Just Cause invasion of Panama, and the name Fort Espinar stuck with the place. This is an area I reported. Um, there was an enlisted housing area and it was down near uh, what was gate number two and an unused gate uh, to Fort Gullick and pretty well surrounded by vegetation and so forth. But it always had areas that, uh, that were kept open. Um, well, if we look here at 1969, you can see that the housing area is, uh, you know, is is very isolated. The none of that growth outside of the uh, the gate had occurred at that point. All right, and here's a 1997 map. And uh, again, we can see the housing area here and the old gate two was here. 
can another map showing Fort Gulick at that point. You can see the housing area back here. Next place is the Gatun tank farm. And let me pull back a little bit on this. It is a very large area. Um, technically not part of Fort Gulick, but accessed through Fort Gulick. And um, it was uh, built in 1940, February 1942, the construction began and it was built under Navy contracts. And it's on a 1700 acre tract of land. And the tank farm includes 15 very 27,000 barrel and 11 50,000 barrel steel tanks and seven 27,000 barrel tanks of pre-stressed uh, concrete. And it was sunk into the ground um, to provide protection from uh, air attack and so forth. And it was connected to the existing Mount Hope tank farm, which was uh, still there. And it's, there are elevated tanks. And it was also connected to Cocosolo. Uh, you know, Cocosolo was a naval. Uh, naval base, and also to the Cristobal Piers. Uh, in 1943, it was connected to the Pacific side uh, by means of the trans Isthmus pipeline, which uh, connected it with uh, uh, the Arahan tank farm on the Pacific side. Nineteen sixty nine map. You can uh, you can see how the area here you know was uh, kept clear in order for access and so forth. And I included this fragment of uh, the Fort Gulick map because it shows the tank farm in here. And let me see, this one, this map fragment does not show pipelines. Okay, I guess we don't have a fragment here. Here again is the, the tank farm. Some of the map fragments show pipelines and so forth. I'd like to thank veteran Richard Wyman for putting together all of this information on possible places to test in the Panama Canal Zone. We are further than we have ever been before. We have a rulemaking request that's been granted by the VA Secretary. We have an HR 5026 bill for Panama introduced into the Congress.